Okay, everybody, I'm back. Oh, sorry, let me do this here. Sorry, it cut off at the end there. Last I saw, I was quoting a scripture, Revelation 1 and 8. It says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come. The Almighty! And He is the Almighty. And it off with me, uh, cut me off before I could finish that scripture. I was doing this, and then I kept going, and kept going, kept going, and then I noticed the camera shut off. When I looked at it, I uh, missed uh, part of what I put in there, so I have to do part of this over again. Hopefully I can get this done in two parts. So anyways, I'm talking about lust of the flesh as opposed to, I'm sorry, no, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Going after our fleshly desires um, instead of our spiritual desires. So, instead of following the Spirit of God, if we're following... Um, we're following our flesh. You know, we're not living after God. And, and I don't know about you. I don't want to take any chances with my eternity. And there's a lot of things I need to work on. I'm going to describe hell. Hell is a place of um, outer darkness with weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 25, um, 30. It's a place of torment. Uh, Luke 16, 23. A place where you're tormented. Place of Sorrows, 2 Samuel 22 and 6. Place of Everlasting Destruction, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 9. Says that uh, Revelation 21 and 8, the fearful, the unbelieving, the indomitable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars have their part in the lake of fire. It's a lake of fire. It's a place where the fire is not quenched, Mark 9 44. It's a bottomless pit. Revelations 9 and 2, you're fallen forever. Place of no rest, Revelations 14 11. A place of hopelessness, of unsatisfied desires. Let's read it. Luke 16, 24. <clears throat> Let me drink some of my throat tea. says, talking about the rich, uh, the rich man of Lazarus, the rich man always wore purple linens and had uh, lived a good life and he didn't, you know, Lazarus, he had sores all over his body and, and they had to be, and he had to be licked by dogs, he didn't, he didn't have anything that a rich, uh, rich man had. But when he died, the rich man went to heaven and Lazarus went to hell and Lazarus he could see the rich man in Abraham, and he said, could you just dip my tongue with water, send it down, just so he could be relieved a little bit. But he couldn't even have that. And you know, here, a, a dip of water is not going to do anything. You know, a finger of water on your tongue is not going to help out at all. We need big gulps. I'm going to read it. 24, Luke chapter 16, verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his tongue in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy life time receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Um, so, you know, we'll just stop there. Luke chapter 16, verses 24 and 25. The thirst is never quenched there. Your desires are not met. Unsatisfied desires. You don't get your desires met in hell. And this is what I want to read in here. So we're talking about it. Hell, place of outer darkness with weeping and gnashing teeth. Place of torments. A place of sorrows. Place of everlasting destruction. It's a lake of fire. Place where the fire is not quenched. It's a bottomless pit. You're falling forever, basically. and fallen and fallen place of no rest, a place of hopelessness and unsatisfied desires. Can't even get a dip of water for your tongue. Watch what you do in life. So basically this is what it is. Hell is, as you can see what I described there, hell is not like people say where the party, they party all night long and there's sinners there and you're raising a ruckus and you're listening to 
whatever you listen to, rap, or you're listening to Def Leppard, rock music, or whatever. It's not a place where the Bud Li um, Budweiser doesn't quit flowing. That's not what hell is. No, no. Hell is all darkness. Hell's a bottomless pit where you're constantly falling, and you're falling forever. People that died 2,000 years ago or 10,000 years ago, they're still falling. And you don't quit falling. And it's darkness. And you can't see anything. And, you know, it'd be better if you could talk to somebody like you can do in prison or wherever. But you can't even talk to anybody. You can't see anybody. It's all dark. You can't see anything around you except for flames. Dark. You can't see anything but flames. You can't talk to anybody. And you're falling. And you're thirsty and you're hungry. You can't even get a dip of water for your tongue. So you're in this black place, this bottomless pit, but you can hear sounds. You can hear ghastly sounds, evil sounds, scary sounds, sounds of people being tortured. You can hear things around you, you don't know where it's coming from. You can't see anything, you don't know who's in front of you, who's behind you, who's beside you, who's ready to club you. You just hear sounds of people being tortured, and you're being tortured. You can't hear, but you can feel. Oh, you know, when you go to hell, you can still fear. I mean, you can still feel. And you're scared. And it's the scariest feeling ever. And you're stuck there. And you'll never get out. You're there for eternity. And it's mighty frightening. So, you know, it's just not a place I want to be. Hell is... It's like a haunted house, if I can describe it. But the only thing is, it's real life. It's no horror movie, but it's, it's worse because it's eternity and you don't die. You're already dead. Just think about that. If you want to live your life, eternity, and that's where all the people are going, you know. People like, I'm, I'm not the judge, I don't send anybody to hell, and I, but people like Hitler, people like Charles Manson, they may have a good time when they're here. They may like to do evil things. They may not have feelings. But they're going to realize. See, when you go to hell, not only is it black, not only are you thirsty, not only are you hungry, not only are you hearing ghastly sounds, not only are you being tortured, not only is the only thing you see is fire, not only can't you talk to anybody, but you still have your memories. You remember your life. You're coherent. You know what's going on. And you remember, you remember the good times you had, you remember the mistakes you made, and you wish you could go back, but you can't. You have those memories. You have those memories of the good life. Those memories that are just driving you crazy. Those memories of when you had fun with friends, when you can go out for a steak, when you can get rest. Now you can't. And you can't do it over. So that's hell. You know, I want people to understand. I'm not trying to... I'm just telling you what the Bible says and what I heard someone preach. I've heard someone preach just like this to me on hell. Not to me, but to a church in particular. And I said, man, I was scared to death. And I'm probably not doing as good a job as they are. And I want to do it for effect. At the same time, though, it's not really why I want to do it. I just want people to understand, maybe open their eyes. And I'm telling myself, too, because I, I do a lot of things and I have to ask for forgiveness. And I don't want to end up in this place. It's scary. It's scary to think about. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I want you to understand. That's what hell is, folks. This is the second death. So anyways, Jesus is coming. Thessalonians 4, 16. And the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Thessalonians 4.16, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Matthew 24, 35-36. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but this world shall not. And of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. <clears throat> so we don't want to give into the carnal mind. We don't want to walk after the flesh. Because as I read here, you know, you know what can happen eternity into that, into hell. But um, we want to live by spirit, not by sight. Peter 2 and 9, 
this is my favorite scripture, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show uh, praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. My favorite scripture is just amazing. <clears throat> Um, so, you follow the spirit of flesh and commit sins, bad things can Now, God can forgive your sins. Sin is death. But you can still be forgiven. You can still repent. We've all sinned. And that's why God died for us, so we can be forgiven of our sins. He was a sacrificial lamb that took the sins of his world. But we still need to repent and ask for forgiveness. <coughs> um... <coughs> 